Hello everybody, it's Pastor Kevin here bringing you today's daily devotion. It's a lovely day, a little crisp but sunny. We, um, let's see, we've been going through the James Shuffle and we've gone through a lot of different topics. Today we're going to be in chapter 5 uh, and we're going to be starting with verse 7. So this is God's word for us today. You ready? Be patient therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that <clears throat> you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Behold, we consider those blessed who remained steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. So that's it. <clears throat> and the real nut here is patience and what's the root of our patience. Um, James points to the prophets and to Job for us to see that we, you know, he was saying we look back and see like, man, that was, they just, they hung in. They hung in there. And this whole example of the farmer who waits for precious fruit and it's like, if you think about it, where we live in a very, uh, uh, they were in a very agrarian society. We were in a very capitalistic, consumer, trade-based uh, society. And not, not that they didn't trade back then, but you have to realize that those <clears throat> waiting for the crops was waiting for your meal. It was waiting for your food and your sustenance. And there was a lot of planning that took place, right? And... It talks about the patience and, and waiting for the early and the, the late rains, things that you have no control over, right? There, there are things that make your, make your crop plentiful, but somehow James is speaking of this in the sense of awaiting the Lord, that you're waiting on this hope that you know is there, that those rains will come in essence. You will bear fruit. You will get this crop. The fruit of the earth is going to become so, or it will come, so be patient, be steadfast. And some of these people are probably suffering. They're probably, whether at the hands of, of someone else within their body or people outside in the culture around them. I mean, Christians were having a difficult time. I won't say that there's like widespread persecution, but you have to think about this idea that a Christian was kind of lumped into the category with the Jews, but the Jews didn't necessarily want them in the same category. Um, and it was a confusing time and they weren't always looked on appropriately because they served one Lord and they couldn't uh, follow Caesar. They couldn't say yes to Caesar like other people could because they had a king already. So if you think about it, James is saying your patience is like waiting for a crop that will come because the one who brings the rain, he's faithful. It says at the end, he's uh, compassionate and merciful. Yeah. God is compassionate and merciful. He's the one who provides the way for us. Even So even when we are dealing with challenges in our day, even when we're dealing with challenges in our week or maybe a year or maybe our entire life, the question is, is do you look at God as the one who pays off the patience? Um, that our patience has a certainty at the end of it. We have something that is rushing towards us. And it is out of God's compassion and his mercy, which we see on a cross. We see Jesus given, gifted, Jesus taking on the cross on our behalf, taking on death itself, taking on cosmic sin, our own brokenness. The very things that, that they might be suffering for, God has already taken on it at the cross with the Son, Jesus. So we have reason to be patient so I guess I'd ask you is that how much are you not leaning into Jesus? What are the things that, that make you impatient? What are the things that are making you like either anxious or maybe even angry or frustrated? Because maybe those are the things that we should remember. We should go back to, no, we have a compassionate and merciful God who's proven it throughout all of scripture, throughout our lives, that he is the one who will come through who will bring the ultimate fruit, who will bring food to the table, who actually invites us to the table that we don't deserve to be at. A table 
with him in his presence. It, it, it literally talks, establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. And this is not just an idea of Jesus coming back. It is actually the king coming back who wants to be in your presence, who wants to be in my presence through no power or value of our own other than we are his. That's super good news. So that's what we need to hold on to. So I'd ask you, just consider, what are the things where maybe you have problems with patience? I know I do. I find myself cursing under my breath when I don't do something right or, you know, I'm in the kitchen and I mess up and I I just get angry. Do you do things like that? Because maybe we should be repenting of things like that and asking God to change us. Asking him to like, get in there and work on my heart. That's what I want. Work on my heart to be more patient with myself. Work on my heart to be more patient with my family, my spouse, my kids, my workplace, my the, the world around me with masks and pandemic. Help me to be patient knowing that you are at hand. Knowing that even that the Spirit is with us now, that your physical real presence is what is promised at the end. That is something I look forward to. And I hope you do too. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for that promise. We thank you that um, that you are at hand, that the Lord is at hand, that you are, are coming, that you're coming to be with us, to set all things right, to set us right, to make us exactly how we were intended to be, to, um, to help us fix our eyes. Help us fix our eyes on that, on that hope, such that it would make us patient with the people around us, especially the people we love most, the people in our families, the people in our church family, the ones that we should be caring about and pouring ourselves out for all the time that the world would know what you're like by how we actually treat each other and care for each other and love one another. Help us to do that. Um, Yeah, help us to recognize how good you are. Help us to go back to the cross and recognize your graciousness, your compassionate mercy for us. We need that, Father. Help us to know that today and every day. Help us with uh, being patient with things because of that knowledge of who you are and where you're taking us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks for being with me, guys. We'll see you.